the Bible out, yeah. sticking them in our pocket, and scared we're going to get caught with them, we can go and just in the middle of the grocery store. Pray yeah. Yeah. And we're blessed to live in a place like that. A lot of yeah. times we take it for granted because it's all we know, but there's people all over the world that can't do it. Man. I tell you what, I was I felt like Elisha back there a minute ago. I had a double portion because I pulled one of them mints out of my pocket and there was two of them in one pack. I had a double portion of paper bag. All right, man. That was a good day. day. Y'all turn to uh, Psalms 51. I usually start out with some little story or something, but I ain't got one this week. So we'll go right into the Word. Won't be long the garden time. That's right. Be preaching about gardening. I can't help it. I heard I do it every year. Huh. Yeah, I started while you was up here making fun of us. <laughs> so you got busted. <laughs> Psalm 51, verse 16. I've got the CSB tonight. It says, You do not want a sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifice pleasing to God is a broken spirit, and you will not despise a broken and humbled heart, God. The King James says a broken and contrite spirit, yeah. one that realizes where they're at and that they need God. <clears throat> and he will not despise it, and he would rather have that than a burnt sacrifice, is what the psalmist is saying. Tonight we're going to talk about progress by degrees. Now, I thought that was a common saying. We hear it all the time in SOCON because they're talking about, you know, you don't have to be perfect tomorrow just because you started trying today. If you could do 10 push-ups today and you can do 11 tomorrow, that's progress. You might not can do 40, but you can do one more than yesterday. That's right. progress by degrees. But I was telling Bart this morning, I Googled progress by degrees just trying to get a picture like they used for the video. Google didn't have anything about it. Hmm. So maybe it's just something that SOCON uses. I don't know, but... The, the, the premise behind it is every little step in your walk or anything that we do is just important as the big ones. I took a picture last night at the gym of a 45-pound plate and a two-and-a-half-pound plate. Now, those of us that lift, we like the big 45-pounders, you know, yeah. make us look big and all that. Yeah. But that two-and-a-half-pounder, if, that's, if you could put that on there and get that little bit extra than what you could before, that two and a half pounder is just as important. Yeah. Everything we do is set up the same way. We don't just wake up one morning and be a supervisor at our job. You, it takes time to get there. There's steps. Before you can become a supervisor, you have to go way, way back and at least put an application in for the job itself. Before you build a house, you've got to have a foundation. And after you get the foundation, the roof's not automatically on. You've got to go through steps. You've got to get walls. Progress by degrees. Years ago, before you passed away, if Ed McMahon came to your house with a check for $10 million, you still had to send that application in with a subscription for Better Homes and Gardens before he'd ever know that you wanted to win that $10 million. So we have to do things one step at a time. And anything good that we do is set up that way. If you want to get healthier, you're not going to wake up tomorrow and be healthier. It takes time. If you want to have long hair and you've got short hair, you ain't going to wake up tomorrow and have long hair. Amen. Boots, you may be waiting a little bit longer than tomorrow. Like, yeah, I don't know. But now progress by degrees goes backwards as well. Anything good that we do is step by step. But everything that we do bad is step by step. Yes. If you are failing, if you fail a class in college or in high school, it's not because of one test that you took. You had to fail a few of them. It's not because of that test you took yesterday that gave you the failing grade for the year. Somewhere down the line, there were some other bad grades. If your car's motor blows up, somewhere down through there, it's because you either didn't put oil in it or you was revving it too hot or something. If you just let it sit in the yard, it might never run again, but it ain't because the motor blowed up. So there has to be steps that take things away. And you don't have to raise your hand, but for anybody here that used to drink, like I did, a lot of mornings I'd wake up and say, man, that last beer, whoo, that last beer didn't have a thing to do with it. The 27 before that last one is the one that got me feeling so bad. So we have steps in regression 
just like progress. So we, it's still progress by degrees. The, the lamb that left the flock, Jesus said he left the 99 to go get the one. The one yeah. wasn't in the flock and all of a sudden just turned around and he was 100 yards away. He had to leave one bite of grass at a time. One little bit. And we do that through sin. We start out with something small and another small and then a little bigger and then a little bigger. And maybe another small one before you know it. we far away from God. And 2 Samuel chapter 11 is a perfect example. We're not going to read it. You know the story once we get into it, but read it later. 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 2. David's out walking around, King David, mm -hmm. at the big palace. Mm -hmm. He just happens to glance over the wall and sees this woman on top of her house taking a bath. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to bet that ain't the first time she's done that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bet it ain't the first time he noticed that. Because mm -hmm. it was common back then for mm -hmm. the roof of a house to be used by people for eating or sleeping even. Yeah. So I would say he knew exactly which part of his rooftop to go to. <coughs> to see what he was looking for. <clears throat> and he could have looked and went back inside. But he didn't. He looked and he had a desire. So on that desire, he told one of his servants, find out who that is. They come back and said, that's your soldier Uriah's wife. He could have stopped that. Oh, that's Uriah's wife. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Never mind. But he did. Bring her to me. He took another step into that sin that started with just a look. And then it went even further and he brought her, when they brought her to him, he lay with her. And she ended up pregnant. Now any of those three or four points, he could have stopped at and said, God, I'm sorry. Repent. It would have been done. Over and done. But he went through those four points, and then it got a little bit worse. Because yep. when he found out that she was pregnant, and everybody in the whole city knew that Uriah was off at war, yes. mm -hmm. he knew something was going to come out of him, and he was going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So instead of confessing to God, coming clean in front of his countrymen, because who's going to do anything to the king back then yeah. for sin? I mean, I'm not talking about God. I mean, who in the, in the city mm -hmm. could yeah. do anything about it? Nobody, because they, they were scared to do anything to the king. Mm -hmm. So he could have come out and admitted his wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. But he did. Mm -hmm. He sent to have Uriah brought back from the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Which as in uh, chapter 1 tells us, or verse 1, I'm sorry, of 2 Samuel chapter 11, that's where David should have been to begin with. It was springtime. Yeah. It was time when the battles went on, when the warring was among the people. And David was world-renowned to be an awesome soldier and leader. Mm -hmm. But he was hanging out at the house. Mm -hmm. He wasn't supposed to be there to begin with. But anyway, he had Uriah brought back to him because he'd come up with this plan, this grand plan. Yeah. Man. And it was a good plan. Yeah. I'll get Uriah back here. He'll be so happy to see his wife. Mm -hmm. He'll spend the night with her. Mm -hmm. Everybody will think that baby's his. Mm -hmm. It won't matter. Mm -hmm. But Uriah didn't do that. Your eyes slip outside. Mm -hmm. And when David said, why did you sleep outside instead of going into your wife? He said, I'm not going to do that while my men are out here fighting on the battlefield. Amen. So David decided to invite him for supper and he poured the liquor down. Got him drunk. That'll get him to go into his wife. Mm -hmm. But he still didn't do it because Uriah was an honorable man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uriah was not going to do that. Not, it wouldn't have been wrong at all. It would have been perfectly fine. Legal in the eyes of God, legal in the eyes of the people, but he just did not want to have even a night inside of a building of his home while his men were out fighting. He was an honorable man. So that didn't work. Well, David said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. So he sent Uriah back to battle with a note. The note was to Joab, the commander of David's army. And he had Uriah carry a note that had instructions for Joab to move the people back from the front lines and leave Joab or leave Uriah alone so he'd be killed 
Not only did he send the note, he made Uriah carry. Yeah. Carry his own death sentence on the battlefield. That was nowhere near honorable. Nothing that he did in any of these things was honorable. But he could have stopped at any time. How many times in our life have we looked up and said, I don't know how I got in this mess. I don't know why this happened to me. I don't know how I went from everything going good to the way this is. Why, God, did you let that happen? Yeah. But how many times afterwards, when we get out of our own self and out of our pride, can we look back and say, oh, well, I, I, I did that. Yeah, that's right. And since I didn't want that to happen, then, then I did this too. <coughs> one, one of the best natural ways to see it is credit card debt. Yeah. <coughs> You're behind on a bill, yeah. so you get this card in the mail. Uh -huh. You get pre-approved. Get this credit card. Give you $500 limit. All you got to do is pay it back $7,000. Would you like, hey, I could use that to pay this bill, or I could use that because Black Friday's coming up, and they got these TVs and laptops on sale. So you get it. <clears throat> well, then you realize that that payment's a little more than, than what you could handle. So you check the mail, and there's another credit card. Thank you, Jesus, for another visa. So you get in and get it, and next thing you know, all these commercials on TV want to help people out of $10,000 credit card debt. Mm -hmm. It all started with one purchase. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a perfect bank account, all their bills paid and everything else, and wake up one morning and just all this debt was there. Yeah. It had to start with one thing, and it trickled, trickled, it trickled, yeah. until it was a raging river of debt that they couldn't Man. do anything about. Our sin is the same way. We can walk away from God and not even know we're walking away from him. David. The Bible says he's a man after God's own heart. He knew what God had done for him. He was an old shepherd boy out there, and he was anointed king of all this. And then, it, progress by degrees. He didn't become king that day. He had to go kill this big tall guy. And then he became a favorite of Saul. Well, Saul put him in charge of all these, these soldiers, and he went out and he killed, and he became a hero. Well, then Saul got jealous yep. because he was becoming more popular in his own country than Saul was. So he sought to kill him, chased him around everywhere, in and out of caves. And then when Saul died, David became king. But he had all these steps he had to get to to that. So he knew what God had for him. He knew where God had put him in his life, and yet he did this anyway. But either one of these steps, he could have looked and stopped right there. Mm -hmm. Any man or woman that tells you that somebody else ain't never caught their eye, I won't say that L word about liar, but it makes me pop into their head because we're all people. Man. What is it? Uh, somebody said, if you just look at them, it's just looking. But if you drive around the block and look again, that's lust. <laughs> But, you know, thoughts come into people's mind. Eyeballs get turned. But we can stop it right there. It depends on what we do next. When David saw what he wanted, he wanted to know who it was. So he asked. And like I said earlier, he could have said, oh, that's Uriah's wife. Uriah is out on the battlefield risking his life for all Jerusalem. I'm not going to mess with her. But instead he said, bring her to me. All right. Still was in good shape. Could have brought her over, had dinner, talked about how wonderful of a soldier her husband was. Sent her back home, but he didn't. He kept her there overnight. Yeah. Yeah. He was no longer in good shape, but he was still not a murderer. Yeah. He was still not deceiving your eye. He could have come out and admitted his faults. He could have said, I messed up. I will take care of that young one. But now you just out there and fight. You come back. We'll talk man to man. You can punch yeah. me in the face, whatever yeah. you want to do. But instead, he covered it up and thought he could get Uriah to help him unknowingly. But Uriah was an honorable man. Yeah. Yeah. man. So David's little plan didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And it don't, all, it don't all show up in 2 Samuel 11. Yes, Lord. But what David did here, 
cause chaos for the rest of his life oh, yeah. and for the next generations Man. of his life. Part of, he lost a, a, a child, a baby, because of this. It said that the sword would never leave his house. Yeah. That means there would always be battle and war. Mm -hmm. One brother killed another one. Mm -hmm. Another brother tried to kill him and actually ran him and his people, mm -hmm. David and his people, out of the city. Mm -hmm. And then Joab killed him. I can't remember the boy's name. It started with A. He had real long, pretty hair. He was riding along and a branch caught his hair. Mm -hmm. He was hung up. Joab went and could have said, all right, we got it. Let's take him back to his daddy. We'll put him in jail or whatever. But he didn't. He killed him. Amen. All those things could have never happened if David would have looked across that wall and said, huh, yeah. she's taking a bath. And turn out and walk back in. Yeah. None of that would have happened. All of that judgment pronounced upon his family mm -hmm. was because of that action. Yeah. The sword Amen. will never leave your household. Amen. His daughter would have never been killed. His son would have never killed another son. His other son would have never got killed. Solomon was part of his household. I think a lot of the issues Solomon had was because of what David did. Because of that judgment pronounced on him. The sword will never leave your house. So, what do we get out of all of this? Yeah, we know that he could have done better. But he didn't. But he ended up in pretty good shape, you know. I mean, all this stuff happened. When he died, he's still revered. We look at him today as one of the most famous heroes in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Was it really all that bad? Yeah, it was really <coughs> all that bad. Man. He did come back to God. That's why his life ended the way it did. Redeemed. And why we look on him today. He could have been somebody we looked at, like I talked last time about Jonah. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot of good that we look at Jonah. We think it's a cool story when we're kids. Because he got eaten by a well. But he just ran from God. Disobeyed God. Even when he did what God wanted him to do. And God's purpose was served to the people of Nineveh. Jonah was still just mad at God. Okay. Mad that he had to do it to begin with. So that's could've, that could have been what we looked at for David. <laughs> today. But the difference was. Even after all those steps. Progressing negatively. This degree. This degree. This degree. This degree. He stopped finally, repented to God, and was redeemed Amen. through God. Amen. So what can we learn from that? Yeah, we've messed up. We've done a lot of things we shouldn't have. Maybe we're in a spot that we don't want nobody to know nothing about, so we keep thinking of ways to cover it up. Ways to cover it up. But we can stop immediately and get redeemed by God. We can get redeemed now easier than David did. Yeah, man. He didn't have a prophet come and confess and all this. <coughs> Jesus Christ came and gave his life, yeah. so we don't have to do yeah. nothing. Yeah. We can just look up wherever yeah. we're standing. Man. God, I'm sorry for what I've done. God, straighten me out. Pray and seek the Holy Spirit for guidance on what to do next. Man. Not just look at a way to cover things up. Yeah. Man. And we can yeah. get redeemed right then and there. Man. And when we get redeemed, God don't say, well... I'm going to give you an opportunity to do something. But don't you do what you did before because I'm watching. Yeah. No. Man. When God redeems us and accepts our repentance through the blood of Jesus Christ yeah. and he gives us something else to do, he gives us something else to do. Yeah. We'll remember everything that we did before. Yeah, right. God ain't going to hold it against us because he says, I throw it into the, the sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. Now, we can make that hinder everything that we do from the day of redemption to the day of death. Man. Because our human selves and our mind, oh God, don't, I can't do that for God now because I did this and that. Yeah. There's Man. nobody ever done anything for God that wasn't a fallen human being. Man. Nobody Man. besides Jesus Christ. In this book, in the 18th century, today, no one has ever done a thing for God that wasn't a fallen and failed human being. And we wouldn't have the option to do anything later but for the Spirit of God Amen. and the redemption of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Guilt Amen. will come in our heads. How can I talk to them about Jesus when they know I did this? How can you not? 
Because what Jesus did inside you can show them what Jesus can do inside them. Yeah. It's a witness tool. We don't want to go out and do things on purpose just so we have something to tell somebody. Yeah. Right. But when we make our mistakes in our own selves and God redeems us, that's not our glory. That's not us bragging on what we've done. That's us showing how God has pulled us up yeah. out of that yeah. miry clay like we heard earlier. Amen. That's Amen. all glory to Jesus Christ. It's nothing to do with that. But we can't do the opposite and get down in our own mistakes and in our own past. I've said it before. Guilt and conviction are two different things. Conviction is God letting you know you messed up. It's time to get it right and move on. Guilt is Satan telling you you ain't good enough, that Jesus don't want you no more, that God has nothing for you to do but to sit and wallow in your guilt. Guilt causes people commit suicide. Man. Guilt causes people to hide in a hole and never see anybody. Man. Guilt causes people not to step out for Jesus. Man. Conviction will do none of those things. Conviction will cause you to hit your knees at night. Yeah. Conviction will cause you to seek God before you make another step to make sure that what you're doing is in his will and in his way. Conviction Man. will set your mind in this word. Guilt and conviction are two totally different things. Man. Guilt is not from God. The word says there is therefore no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Yeah. That don't mean you can't mess up. That don't mean you can't do wrong. It means that you're not reminded of it every 13 seconds. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil would do. And I ain't saying that people are the devil, but he'll use people yeah. to Man. remind you of yeah. your past. Yeah. Man. You, you teach Sunday school and you used to run around with us? Yep. You're a youth pastor. You used to run, you've seen the choir. You used to run around with us smoking pot and drinking. Yep. Used to. A lot of people can't get past those words. Yeah. They don't think they mean what they do. Yeah. They mean used to. Yeah. Don't do no more. Yeah. <coughs> a lot of us used to do things. Yeah. I used to do a lot, probably more than most people in here. Oh, that's true. I mean, I was. I was home every night, sometimes three or four o'clock in the morning. But I, you know, I didn't go out and just break people's windows or none of that stuff. And I was wild. And all glory to God that I'm even standing here today. How I made it from 16 to 27, I don't know. And I mean, I literally don't know. There's some nights I don't know how I made it. Don't remember. I don't mean. Walking from here to the door, don't matter. I mean, driving from Bristol, don't remember. Many times. And that's not something, that's not me bragging. That's not me saying, hey, guess what I did. That's me showing what God did. Amen. God pulled me out of that. And that, God didn't have to. You know why? Because God didn't put me in those situations. God put me in a home where I saw and heard and watched the Word come alive every single day. God put me in a home where I was born on a Tuesday and in church on Sunday. I didn't know it, of course, because I was like five days old, but that's the family that I had. I saw my daddy every night reading the Word. I saw daddy teaching me and showing me when I saw him interact with other people what God was supposed to, to be like in us. So I put myself in all them other holes. God didn't do it. So he didn't have to pull me out. Right. I got in an argument with a friend of mine one time at Damon. Did y'all remember Damon? Before it burnt down at Exit 7? Rib place, Jeff. Yeah. Well, we were over there, but we weren't eating rib. And he was talking. His daddy was an alcoholic. And he said, talking about how pitiful he was, how awful he was, and all that, all because his daddy was an alcoholic. I said, don't give me that, John. He said, what do you mean? He said, you were raised in a perfect home. I said, yep. And I'm still sitting right here beside of you doing the same thing. Because mm -hmm. it, it was my choice. Mm -hmm. Just like it was his choice. I, I mean, I understand that things you're around when you're being brought up can affect you, but there comes a point in your life when that's no longer an excuse. Right. Amen. We have to take responsibility for our own actions. Amen. And that, when I tell Josh and all these other kids up here at the school, and I've told them straight up the things that I used to do. I said, don't y'all come to me telling me no stories about how I did this, how I did that, because I could go on up to you if I wanted to. 
Mm. You know? yeah. That's not me bragging. That's not me talking about how cool it was. That's me showing, yeah, I do come up here to school and talk to you about God. And I used to do this, but he pulled me out of that. Mm -hmm. Man. And that was another progress by degree. I didn't get saved one night and then go tell people about how I used to be. No, I was afraid mm -hmm. to tell people how I used to be. But then God showed me, you know, that is our witness. Amen. That is our way. When Jesus went around and told everyone about him and about God, his witness was him. Yeah. He was his own witness. Mm -hmm. When he said, my father, yeah. the people that believed in him and followed him, they knew what was coming next Man. was literally gospel. Man. All he had to say was, my father said. My father said. Now that would have worked with some people with me. I could have said, Well, Daddy said. And I said, Yeah, your dad's all right. You know, but that don't mean I'm gonna change my life. Maybe. Right. But when we use that powerful witness of where we've been, instead of letting ourselves get taken down in those degrees backwards, it's powerful. It's Man. powerful. All right. How many of y'all were saved? Because of someone that you knew wasn't perfect. Amen. But you saw what God Amen. did to them. Yeah. How many of y'all have been blessed by someone you know wasn't perfect? Maybe somebody you went to school with Amen. or worked with and you knew how they used to be, but you saw what God's done with them. Oh, yeah. How many of y'all have stories about someone like that that you share with other people as a way? I would wager we all do. Yeah. We all do. Because we've all took those degrees down mm -hmm. and we've been pulled out of mm -hmm. one more Bless scripture Lord. here and the reason that 2 Samuel chapter 11 is even in the Bible it's not to put David down definitely not to brag on it mm -hmm. 2 Samuel chapter 11 and everything else in here Romans, 5, Romans 15 verse 4 says for whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction mm -hmm. so that we may have hope through endurance and through the encouragement from the scriptures. We read about David and all those steps he took in <coughs> sin. How it started with one little look and progressed all the way down. And then afterwards we read about all that he had to pay mm -hmm. because of the judgment that came down from God on him and his household. Yeah. Yeah. We read that they would make a good movie mm -hmm. if they got some good actors and stuff. I, I love good Christian movies that ain't got a lot of cussing, but man, that some of that acting is just bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it would make a good movie. Man. Just that one part of David's life. Mm -hmm. But that's not why it's there to entertain us. Amen. It's there to teach us. Yes. Man. It's there to instruct us that if we stop at one <clears throat> point, we can keep a lot of things mm -hmm. from happening. The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. Yes. Now there's a lot of ways that people teach on that, preach on that. I think it means the love of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. coming into the life of someone takes away a whole lot of sins that could have been All committed. Right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. This is a horrible comparison, but it's, I read one time that if you have a cat Neutered, paid, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you're saving, you're preventing like 7,000 cats down the future from being born. Mm -hmm. You know, because this cat has 10, and then them 10 cats have 15, and mm -hmm. way down the line. That's the same principle. Mm -hmm. When God's love comes into the heart of one that was in sin, mm -hmm. it stops a lot of other sins yes. from taking place. Yes. And that's why that's in here for us. For us to look at the, the failures of David. And we don't have to say, yeah, that, no, I, I'd never do that. There's no way I'd do that. No way I'd do that and have somebody killed over my mistake. Maybe not, but there's a lot of things we would do. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Amen. Sure. Have, you, have you ever lied to cover up a mistake? Mm -hmm. That's not having your eye killed, but it's still against God. Amen. Amen. Have you ever tried to put it off on somebody else? When 
you've done something. We tell kids all the time, let us know if you see something or somebody does something they shouldn't. And I'm bad for this. You're going to have to quit that tattletale. <laughs> but we, I mean, we do things like instinctually, even kids. Yeah. They'll lie in a heartbeat yeah. and tell you that big brother or sister did something and they didn't do it. I said, big brother, because I never did that with Matt. He was always <laughs> blaming stuff on me. <laughs> he did. <clears throat> He's a kid. He, he can't hear me. That's right. I saw a video that there was three dogs sitting here. They're all on their knees looking up at their owner. <coughs> on their knees. Dogs don't get on their knees. I'm sorry. <laughs> they was all hungered down. But there was trash tore up everywhere, and that woman had a shoe that was just chewed off pieces. Yeah. She's going, who did this? Them dogs just sitting there like get all three of them. Who did this? Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? They just sit there. Well, about the fifth time she said, who did this? The two dogs on the outside both put their legs around in the one in the middle like it's pointing to it. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they meant to do, write it out, but we do that. And we'll do that as a lie sometimes. Somebody messes up on a piece of paperwork at work, and it don't have your signature on it, and you think you can get by with it and not get in trouble? I've heard tales of people say that somebody else did it. Blame it on the night shift. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it used to go. Night shift must have done that. But we can stop this progression, this downhill progression. We've got the word to show us examples of why we should. We've got God sitting up there looking at us through the blood of Jesus Christ showing us how we can. Man. Altar's open. If you have anything in your life that's got you stuck and you don't have to come up here and share it with everybody, you know, but you can share it with Jesus. Or if it's not you yourself, but you know that there's something going on in somebody's life that you care for, that you love, that's holding them back for progressing in the right way, you can bring it here to Jesus. If there's something that's going on in your life and you feel like your past is keeping you from being worthy, you can come here and share it with Jesus because that's just not true. You can ask Him for the reassurance that He loves you, for the reassurance that you are redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ, for the reassurance that He does have a work and a purpose for you. The Bible says, news for the world. I don't know if He would have formed us in the world if He didn't have something. 